Toledo, Ohio. Home of world famous chili dogs, the Jeep, and silly bands. You guys remember those things? And just past downtown, over the Martin Luther King Jr. Bridge and down Miami Street is the largest mural in the United States, the Glass City River Wall. Wider than three football fields stacked end to end and three times taller than the Hollywood sign. In other words, huge. Way too big for a half hour educational documentary. So we decided to paint something else, something smaller. This is the Glass City River Wall mini mural. Meet the artists. Cody Klo and Gabe Galt. Cody is a muralist, tattoo artist, shop owner, an all around fun and talented guy. Gabe is an LA based artist, goofball, official Tony Paco's bun signer, VR muralist, and of course, designer of the Glass City River Wall. As always, our crew chief for the River Wall, the muralist, the artist, the prep master, Dean Davis. He's uh, also kind of funny too. So how do we turn this wall into this mural? Well, first, let's check in with our project manager, Christina Casper, and the owner of the wall and main donor, Tim Croak. Christina Casper, project manager, Glass City River Wall, procurement of donors. Hi, I'm Tim Croak, and I own Croak Asset Management. And my involvement in this project is Christina Casper and her organization came to me to help support them in their project. So what happened in that meeting? She kind of showed up in my office uh, with a mutual friend and she said, man, I've got a project that I think you need to hear about from a person that I think you need to meet. Why were you approached? I've got a beautiful building and a beautiful parking lot, but I've got a wall that is just absolutely dead. You had an artist that you wanted to elevate, and so he was able to come and kind of join the project that way. Cody had painted the mural uh, kind of across the front of our building, so it's something that we look out on every day. One of the things I wanted to do with this project is make sure that we had Toledo artists involved with it. You know, Christina and her group were very willing to contact Cody and bring him into the project so everybody could work on it together. It was important, just like it was on the bigger one, to have, you know, our crew chief is from Toledo and the rest of the people that are executing the mural are all from Toledo or Detroit. Number one, those of us with no artistic talent have a responsibility to support the people that do have artistic talent because that, that's what makes a great community and it's what beautifies the community and so you want that. But I, I was really attracted to the educational component of this, that, that we were able to bring in kids from Scott High School, Ottawa Hills High School, and my alma mater, which is Cardinal Stritch. And so those kids were all here looking at the wall, seeing how it was done, actually helping out on the effort. All of this sounds great, but how do we find someone to fund something like this? When we talk about procuring donors and people who have interest and whatnot, I mean, getting a donor is just matching someone's passion with a runway for them to elevate somebody else. I agree with that totally. And I think you would find that, especially in the, this Toledo area, yeah. uh, the, the community is very generous. It's always a no unless you ask. And I think you know? People are very open to the ask. How should someone approach a conversation with a potential donor? I think words are, are very important in how they're used. And, and to walk in somewhere and say, can you write me a check, isn't a very effective approach. If you walk in and say, I just want a check, I'm not energized by that. Right. What if I'm just starting out? Listen, I, I think if you have an artistic reputation, it's 
because of loads of hard work, but there is something to be said for being uh, with someone at the beginning of their journey. Sure, oh yeah, when we brought um, Cody in, Cody's a young guy. Yeah. What should be the ultimate goal for these relationships? I, I think the effort is to bring someone in, but to stay with them and, and grow with them, and, and they might write a check initially, but over time, they, they should write a lot of checks and give a lot of support, you know, because it is an ongoing process. So, we have the wall, we have the funding, what's next? This wall was not only covered in dead vines, but because of how close it was to multiple consistently used entrances and exits, power washing wasn't an option. Instead, Dean uses his brawn and a square nose shovel. He now paints the wall with Tunemic brand paint in the color of clear sky. This is the same brand and color as the Glass City River Wall. He sprays this base coat instead of rolling or brushing it, not only because spraying is faster, but because of the rough texture of the wall. The process for this was we had to do a projection outline of the whole thing. Gabe's right. We see Dean again arriving with the lift, also known as a compact crawler boom. He, Cody, Gabe, and Gabe's manager, Justin, unhook it, but already see two problems. First, a fence and dumpster for a nearby restaurant. How's this chilly weather for you? It's good. It's like 100 degrees in LA, so it's like night and day, literally. <laughs> and second, they won't be able to see the projected images with that bright security light. has no switch, so Dean simply decides to cover it and move along. Now Dean can project simply using a MacBook and a portable projector. This is a scaled down version of what Dean and Eric Henn did at the Glass City River Wall itself. Here, the River Wall's lead muralist Eric Henn first attempts projecting with an old school overhead. It's bright enough, but it needs power from a generator, so it's not portable. They decide instead to use a smaller home theater projector that can be powered by a laptop. Yes, that's Dean Davis and Eric Henn, 100 feet in the air, above the Maumee River, at night. Now back at the mini mural, Dean, Gabe, and Justin fine-tune the image placement. Also, with large projects like this, don't forget to arrive camera-ready for local stations like Beacon. Now, Cody and Dean outline the image with an off-white spray paint. of the native mother portrait on paper, then on the silo, and now the almost complete portrait. We ended up doing the, the camouflage, the, the flowers, the sunflowers, the petals, everything. These guys are just beasts, man. It's a different breed. All right, it's day two. This finished stenciling might not look like much, but let's alter that a bit to bring out the white paint. This is closer to what the artists see as they're painting. 
The outline is quite rough, but that's on purpose. As we see back at the river wall, the stencil here is well suggested instead of dictated. The stenciling for the sunflowers was done a bit differently, using a doodle grid instead of projecting. Wait, we haven't talked about a doodle grid yet. Okay, so here's our giant blue river wall. It's massive, we know that. So how do we get this to look like this? Well, we've already seen the projecting, but that was only because the portraits had so much detail. The sunflowers, while beautiful, just simply don't have as much. So one of our painters, Chili Rodriguez, this is Chili, suggested we do this doodle grid simply because of the size of this mural. Sure, the painters could hang their buckets out over the river, which they did while projecting the portraits. But this thing is so big they'd have to do it in sections, and keeping everything aligned would not only have been daunting, it would have been likely impossible. Not to mention having to wait until nightfall to make any corrections or changes. So, we doodled. This is Kelly Golden and Shana Castellan doodling. Why doodle? Well, it makes locating a certain spot on the silos easier and because it's fun. They could have overlaid a grid, but when your Y axis is 136 feet tall and your X axis can be upwards of 900 feet wide, it's difficult to determine if you're at A16 or B17 when the silo is five feet in front of you. I know it's hard to appreciate the scale unless you've seen it in person, so here's a size comparison. So here's what we did. First, Gabe Galt creates the assets. Then Dean Davis takes the assets and lays them out on a photo of the silos according to Gabe's original design. Then Dean gives this to the team and says, we'll need two concentric circles of doodles about yay high that span silos 18, 19, 20, and 21. The team tapes these inside of their buckets, lift off, and start doodling. See, it's a lot easier to say, we need a three foot line going through this cool S than to say F67. So after the doodles are done, I take the drone up, that's me, and snap a pic. Then I bring it into Photoshop, alter the colors to bring out the doodles and send it to Dean. He then overlays the asset once again, gives it back to the team and they do this. Here's Will Bevan sketching a rough outline with a crayon at the end of a roller extender. Other painters then go over that with spray paint, which gives us something like this. And then they fill it in with the correct colors. Now back at the mini mural, Gabe and Cody start by choosing a few paint colors. They're using 94 spray paint by Montana Colors, which comes in 217 varieties. Because I can, I can go back with the orange just later and hit that. It's yeah, a this nice, is a, a nice Phoenix color. color. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's... Oh yeah, that's pretty sick. Yeah. You want something more vibrant than that? Maybe like, yeah, like two or three tangerines or something. Uh, but this is, this, I'm going to start with like this. This is great. Depending on where you buy these, they start at about six bucks a can meaning Gabe and Cody used about $500 worth for the mural. These 94s are so like, nice. Like, What's that? I love how it just doesn't smell like shit. It's, <laughs> it's got sweet smelling. Yeah, wanna eat it. Don't eat paint. Over at the river wall, it's the same story, but on a different scale. Regardless of the size of your mural, you're gonna need a lot of equipment and talent. Cody brought along his collection of various caps. They help control the shape and rate of spray. Hey Gabe, you told me one of them caps out of that bucket. For sure? Are you with those fat caps? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I forgot I took them all. It's fine, I just need one. Sorry, no. You should also wear a respirator whenever you can. Spray paint contains numerous hazardous chemicals. This model with two cartridges costs about $35, similar to the ones we use when painting the Glass City River Wall. All of that paint would have been in your lungs. You like wearing these things, Contron? It's all right. Nice. 
This wall is about 30 feet high, and Cody's ladder only gets him up about 12, so we'll need some lifts. We've already seen the lift that Dean brought, but there isn't enough room for two of those. The fence, remember? Fortunately for the Riverwall crew, space was rarely an issue. When the ladder wouldn't work, Cody attempted to use his own scaffolding. While it gave him a wider work platform, neither reached high enough. He settled on a scissor lift from Great Lakes Rental, who were awesome enough to get this to us within just a few hours. A scissor lift works well for this job because of its relatively tiny footprint and its mobility. Cody can now paint with relative ease, but a scissor lift pales in comparison to the compact crawler boom. If your work area has obstacles and your project has funding for it, this is the way to go. At the river wall, we used these massive lifts from Skyworks Rental. These things extend to 135.5 feet. Perfect height to get all the way to the top. Hey Gabe, you want this just like the picture? Uh, this pic? I mean, I, it's gonna be a little exaggerated. Like, it's not gonna be like, it, just like vibrant, but like not cartoony, but like not, it doesn't have to be like hyper real. Have fun with it, I got you. We started with mid tones, then we just kind of branch out from the mid tones to the dark tones to the light tones, and then it all just kind of comes back together. These red-orange elements will largely be covered up with lighter yellow tones and help to establish depth and shadow. Gabe continues adding base colors, layering one on top of the other. Gabe took inspiration from his visit to a local sunflower farm. This one was right outside of the Genoa Retirement Village in Genoa, Ohio. But his rendition of the flowers on the mural is an artistic interpretation rather than a literal depiction. This darker yellow followed by the lighter yellow helps to create a layered shadow mid-tone effect. Gabe pulled ideas from many cultivars of sunflower, such as this reddish color seen in the Pro Cut Plum. One also notices the yellow coloring found in this more standard sunflower. Also, one of the hallmarks of almost all sunflowers, the shape and distribution of the disc flowers in the center of the head. Don't forget to check your work often from different perspectives. Most passers-by will see this from ground level. Local media in Toledo is very interested in and supportive of art projects. Ensure that you put aside some time for interviews. And so the orange is kind of like the dark tone, but it's not, we're gonna go black on this thing. So, you know, it's not really gonna be the dark tone. Yeah. Now, Gabe fills in the center of the top sunflower with an auburn brown. He's now adding overlapping curved lines in black to emulate the shape formed by disc flowers. Back at the river wall, the centers of the sunflowers have to be approached differently. Because the closest observer is 2,000 feet away, driving 60 plus miles an hour. Since we're in Toledo, it's probably 70 plus.
there's a helipad on top of the parking garage. All these birds not eating the yellow jackets. I wish they were. On day three, we had teachers and students from Cardinal Stritch High School in Oregon, Ohio, help us paint the fence and also take part in the unique opportunity to talk to a muralist as they're painting. Gabe is using a popcorn yellow for the tips of the disc flowers, and Cody is adding more base and highlights to his petals. This process, although considerably scaled down, is quite similar to that of the Glass City River Wall itself. As we can see, the previously mentioned doodle grid will be covered up once the sunflowers are filled in. Gabe uses the same popcorn yellow for the highlights as he did on the petals. If we oversaturate the image a bit, we can see the layering of colors he's used to achieve this depth. Here we see Dean Davis using essentially the same technique on the river wall. Again, the details here are a bit different and almost take on a pop art look. But that's so they can be resolved from quite far away. The sunflowers on the mini mural need more detail as someone can appreciate this art up close and standing still. Well, we're finally here, the last day. Gabe's alone today because all that's left to do are finishing touches and his signature camouflage. Gabe adds a reddish orange and popcorn yellow to the center of the bottom left sunflower for more depth and highlight. Yeah, after we did the sunflowers, after that was completed, I went in with a long extended brush and then I just started to brush in all the blue, all the camouflage. The darker blue camouflage on this mural is one of Gabe's signature techniques and can be found in most of his work. course on the Glass City River Ball. Again, this would be much more difficult or even impossible with a scissor lift considering the obstacles on the ground. Gabe follows the stenciling but still allows himself creative license as he paints. Yeah, I just kind of freestyled my signature up there, which I never do. So I usually have like a stencil that's like huge. I don't, e I don't even think the stencil, stencil is big enough for this. Hi, bro. You 
should. I think it's just how bad do you want to get your stuff out there because like nobody sees it if it's just on your hard drive or just like at home in your garage so you have to always just let everybody be aware that you're working don't do paintings for free for anybody you said don't do it don't do it for free don't do anything for exposure that's the biggest scam <laughs> ever created i learned that the hard way maybe three times and i was like oh i'm done with this if they're willing to pay for it then they're worth the time. The best decision of my life was like not doing anything for free at some point. I would say like always get paid half up front and then half in the middle. You can't always do that. Like sometimes you have to know when to, you know, kind of call in a favor or whatever. I've done that a couple times and then didn't get paid for like months later or whatever. But sometimes for people you want to work with, you do give a little bit, but understand what you can lose. I think it's also like know your value too and understand like where you sit. I wouldn't say there's a hierarchy or anything, but there is like an understanding of what your work is worth. And I think you have to compare yourself to the top dogs in the world and then just kind of work your way down and then that helps you work your way up. In college, I don't think I would have charged anybody over $50 for anything, you know? Probably 30 bucks if you wanted like a sketch or something or a painting or whatever. And 50 max, like I was eating good if I sold a painting for 50 bucks. So I think you just gotta know your worth and know where you're at and be realistic about the whole thing. You know, I've done stuff for some crazy names, you know, people who got millions of followers, but like you'd be surprised how uh, cheap some people are. You know, I'll get a job from some guy, Joe Schmo, and he'll like, pay me full price for it and he's not as rich or famous. I'm not saying that's everybody who I worked with like that, but there's just different levels and you gotta really be a people person and understand who you're working with and who you're talking to and kind of read them, read the room, you know, as soon as you get there. So that's been a big, uh, big step for me is like understanding people. Gabe Gold. Toledo Files. <laughs>